Well, this is a video no one asked for. As you guys know, the Railway series exists, and I might be a little obsessed with it. So, since at the point of recording this, there hasn't been another installment in the Railway series since 2011, I have to wonder, what may have happened between 2012 and 2022 on Sodor? Now, obviously, we don't know for sure what happened, so this is all simply headcanon based off of logical conclusions. And a few things I think would be neat. So without further delay, let's jump right in. In real life, during the development of Blue Mountain Mystery, Nitrogen Studios, the group that was animating Thomas at the time, visited the Tallyclin Railway in Wales, so they could get accurate measurements for their Scarlowy models. However, unlike in real life, there is a real Scarlowy Railway. So, I feel it would make sense that Nitrogen Studios would send their animators to Sodor to get accurate measurements of the characters they're trying to portray. It should be noted that Blue Mountain Mystery as a story is fictional in the world of the Railway series, which, yes, means Luke doesn't exist either but the animators still want to be accurate with their measurements. Unfortunately, Duncan was away at the time, meaning that they couldn't get measurements for a CGI model, and as such, Duncan would not appear in this film. Apart from that, I feel 2012 would be a pretty relaxed year on Sodor. Maybe we'll even be lucky enough Percy only has one accident this year. During 2013, James would celebrate his 100th year in service, and despite his age, I will say he still looks quite splendid. However, I chopped that up more to the cleaners and not to the pompous red engine. I also like to think that this year, the Fat Controller would finally get another saddle tank engine like Wilbert. For the sake of this video, I'll just call this engine Dave, the Do Not Steal engine. Just for fun, let's make him purple, as a bit of a reference to the Coldy Fell. Dave would spend most of his time at Tidmouth Station, as he would be the new station pilot. During 2014, Duncan would finally appear in CGI. However, his model would be... <laughs> less than perfect. Duncan would complain about his portrayal to no end. It's a disgrace if you ask me. They couldn't have just waited a few more weeks for me to get back. Instead, they had to depict me as that abomination. This couldn't have come at a worse time, since, as a bit of cross-promotion, the Thin Controller decided to briefly repaint his engines to resemble that scene on the television series. Kind of like how the Tally Klin will occasionally repaint their engines to look like Scarlowy engines. This upset Duncan as he was painted yellow. But as the weeks went on, he did learn to accept the color, as many kids seemed to like it. All things considered, he did swap back to red when the event ended. 2014 would also mark Toby's 100th year in service. Congrats to Toby, but something about him being younger than James just feels so wrong. Coincidentally, this would also be the 100th anniversary of the Northwestern Railway as a whole. Thomas, being the first engine properly owned by the Northwestern Railway, would pull a very special train to mark the occasion. And as if all that wasn't enough, this year would also mark the 30th anniversary of the television series. 2015 would mark the 70th anniversary of the Railway series. To celebrate, the TV series would create a movie known as The Adventure Begins. Several of the Fat Controller's engines would get an early screening of it at Tim Sheds. Although there were definitely liberties taken with their story, the engines overall enjoyed it. To celebrate the anniversary of the books that made them famous around the world, Edward would pull a special train known as the Audrey Local across the main line. Speaking of anniversaries, this would mark Thomas's 100th year in service. 2016 would mark the 120th year of Edward the Blue Engine, one of the oldest working engines on the Fat Controller's Railway. This year also marked the Flying Scotsman's famous return back to steam. I like to think Gordon would be at the ceremony. The humbly retired express engine would shed a proud tear 
at seeing his one remaining brother brought back into steam. I feel 2017 to 2019 would be fairly uneventful. However, it is worth noting that Henry would celebrate his 100th anniversary in 2019. Sadly, this would be the calm before the storm. Okay, I don't think I need to remind you guys about 2020, so let's purely focus on how this affects the railway. With less and less people willing to use public transport during these difficult times, there would be far less trains moving about. Less trains means less income. Less income means less fuel to go around. As such, big engines who burn far more fuel than little engines would have to stay in their sheds most of the time. Although smaller tender engines like Donald and Douglas would be allowed to go out, most of the trains would be run by tank engines. Regardless of their size, every engine working would need a good sanitation and washdown after each service. On the upside, 2020 would mark the 75th anniversary of the railway series. I like to think there would be some celebration for this. Perhaps, one by one, the Fat Controller's famous engines would exit the yard so people could see them pass by from a safe distance. This could be broadcast, of course, for people who aren't on Sodor. Alternatively, maybe something similar to Thomas and the Royal Engine could occur. I know I said television events don't apply here, but, you know, it could still work. I'll leave this up to you to decide. Sadly, as the festivities ended, the engines were sent back to their shed. The big engines would be quite annoyed, as they would spend weeks on end sitting around doing nothing, growing more and more irritable. The smaller engines would also be getting quite annoyed. They had to do mainline work, which would be difficult for any engine, much less engines far smaller than those intended for it. Sadly, all this bottled up rage would have to come out somewhere, and of course, some bad news came at the worst time. Here comes Thomas! Yep, one of the drivers told the engines about the reboot. This created a fit at Tidmouth Sheds. Prideful, boastful, and other engines concerned with their own image were appalled by this shameless interpretation of their lives. Nay, a mockery of their lives. While other engines, like Edward, were less concerned about the series. Sure, they didn't exactly like it, but at the very least, it doesn't affect them as working engines. The year may have been shoddy, but many of the workmen would bring Christmas decorations near the holidays, so that hopefully they could end the year on a positive note. Yeah, 2021 would be more or less the same. Finally, in 2022, things would begin to transition back to normal. The tank engines would still have to work the line for a little bit, but eventually the railway would be able to afford to run its bigger engines once more. Coincidentally, Gordon would be let out of the shed on his 100th anniversary. This year would also feature the Audrey Extravaganza, held by the Tallyclin Railway, an event meant to pay tribute to Wilbert Audrey's books. Duncan would come to visit, and visitors could pay a few pounds to drive him briefly. However, I'm sure Duncan would complain about these unprofessional drivers operating me. Peter Sam would also come to visit, pulling a special picnic train. Now isn't that just perfect? Our timeline begins with the Tallyclin and ends with the Tallyclin. Well, I'm sure there's things I missed. So if you guys have anything to add to this timeline, just let me know. Also, as a side note, both Flying Scotsman and Rex will be celebrating their 100th anniversary this year in 2023. I couldn't include that on the timeline, but it felt too important for me not to bring up. That's all I have for now. Have a good day, and here's to many more years of the Thomas and Friends fandom.